Hey guys, Jerry Berg, the poor historian, bringing you a long overdue sword review uh, for one that is probably going to be the best poor historian sword uh, thus far. Uh, one that I found to be very useful and surprising in so many different ways. And that would be this guy right here. Uh, so this one I purchased uh, from Amazon through a third party buyer, not directly from Amazon. Um, $34.99 plus free shipping under the title of Viking Sword 40 Inch Blade. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen it. It looks super cheap. The price is ridiculously low. It actually um, also goes, if you have Amazon Prime, for $41.99 if you really want that fast shipping. Uh, this one actually shipped to me fairly quickly too. But, oh my god, <laughs> this was so surprising of the quality. Um, I was not expecting anything more than just something that vaguely looked like a Viking sword. Um, so, uh, this particular one has gone through hell and high water uh, because the event that I used it at, which was the Michigan Nordic Fire Festival in Charlotte, um, was just, oh my god, it was... Re the weather in Michigan uh, was not very compatible for that, for that weekend. But uh, rest assured, when I got it, it looked beautiful. Um, my first impression, so when I first pulled it out of the box and it showed up, I picked it up. This. Look at this. It's a solid scabbard. When have I ever shown a poor historian sword that has a solid scabbard? Never. None of them. Some of them. But not like this. Not of this quality. Um, I'm actually... Kind of glad that this took a, took a bit of a beating because it actually broke through uh, a little bit of the layer here. So I can show you some of the underneath without me actually having to be the one who destroys the sword. Um, look at this. So positives, that's wood in there. That is a wooden scabbard. It might not be the best quality wood, um, but it does have a wood lining. Now the negative, of course, I didn't expect anything less. Um, if you look under here... You can see that the backing of this leather is actually pleather because it has this kind of fabric-y base, which they then cover coated. Um, nonetheless, it does have it sewn up the back like you would. A um, few weird things about it. It does have this super large brass uh, drag or finial or whatever you want to call it. Um, I actually bent it out of shape. It, I promise you it was very solid, and then I, I lodged it under my car seat and tried picking it up, and it just bent. So it, don't expect it to be as loose as this one is if you decide to get it. Uh, the other weird thing is that the topper here, also brass, um, has this little nub on it, which is something that I would expect out of uh, 1800s, 1900s uh, bayonet frog, or sometimes a saber frog, uh, that you would latch on there to hold on your belt. Not something that I would expect in a Viking Age sword. It was kind of weird. I mean, if if you're really worried about it, you can probably cut it off pretty easily with a with a saber saw, um, or something similar, uh, or even just some pliers and break it off. Um, but nonetheless, I was immensely surprised uh, at this particular scabbard. It blew it blew my mind. It was way more than I was expecting uh, when I first got it. Now on to the sword itself. So. Um, First things that I always point out with these swords, does it come sharp? Does it come dull? This, perfectly dull. That is awesome. That means that the makers knew that this would be used for something other than hanging on hanging on the wall in someone's man cave. Uh, they know that it would be used. The tip is still a little sharp. I'm not actually fighting with it. However, that brings me to my next point. When I did a lot of research on this particular sword uh, before I got it, um, apparently someone in the active, uh, authentic Viking reenactment community, um, purchased one of these for, for, for lack of a, a more commonly used term, defarbing. Reenactors might be familiar with that, but the idea is taking something that is kind of authentic and making it much more historically accurate. Defarbing. So what he said was when he went to, um, cut this sword down to a smaller, more usable size... When he tried to cut it, it created sparks. Now, what does that mean? That means even though the uh, the advertisements for this sword label it as a stainless steel sword, it's actually carbon steel. What? 
That is mind-blowing for that price that I got this at. That is, I, I don't think I've ever shown a carbon steel sword. Um, you can take a look. This sword here is uh, carbon steel. You can kind of see it, it kind of has that dull sheen to it. Um, whereas, if I were to get this one here, which is stainless steel, you can see it's kind of mirrored, kind of chromey looking. It might be difficult to see in the video here. But uh, a stainless steel blade, I wish I could prove that this particular one was, aside from just looks. But the best way to do it is to cut it, and frankly, I don't want to cut it. I like this sword. Uh, but carbon steel for the price that we got it at, that is phenomenal. Uh, a few things to look at at the pommel here. Uh, I did not use this at the event. Here, I'll duck down here. I did not use this at the event uh, for combat. Um, I do believe that it does have a threaded tang, like you've seen in some of the other ones, but for the life of me... Oh, hey. Hey, there it goes. Let's check it out. <laughs> it must be because I left this in my car for a month without touching it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, well, nonetheless, I don't know what else I was expecting. Um, it definitely does have a threaded tang, as you can see here. Well, that's the first time I'm looking at that. Pommel is separate. Kind of nice, because if I wanted to mix out this blade, uh, which seems to be the highest complaint about it, um, most common complaint about it, then I probably could. I could probably take this grip off, which I'm not going to try to worry about right now. <sighs> Nonetheless, um, the, the complaint, before I get too off topic, the complaint about the blade is that this thing is heavy, heavy, heavy. It's a ridiculously heavy sword for if you're trying to imitate Viking combat. Um, that would be a little bit lighter, a little bit more well-balanced. It's just this area right here is just ridiculously heavy when you're going to swing it. Um, now that we've got the pommel off, when I was educating about this, I used it specifically either as a demonstration for how some Viking martial arts would work, um, or an example of how to identify um, a Middle Ages or a Viking era, Viking Age sword. I did not go into specifics with Peterson's typology or any of the other typologies for pommel design because this one does not perfectly fit what we're looking for. Um, this one kind of looks like a weird Brazil nut shape that you then cut out as opposed to either of the specific ones. But it does imitate that florette style that was common uh, in the Middle Ages. The point being, if you're going to get into some really deep uh, Viking Age typology education, you might want a chart and not a sword. Oh, that's kind of neat that I was able to take that off there. Very difficult to get off at first. I put a lot of effort into that. Um, so, normally I say don't use any of these poor historian swords for HEMA. And I'm going to stick with that, especially with combat. But this particular one is very solid. It's not flimsy, and the fact that it's carbon steel uh, means that you could at least uh, do some practice with binding techniques against another sword, and this is not going to shatter and cut anyone. Uh, nonetheless, I still don't promote that. I still promote getting proper HEMA stuff. But if you are in a pinch and you like practicing the martial arts, I think this would be fine as long as you watch that tip. I um, believe that's all that I have to say. A few other minor notes. Uh, it does have a fuller. Very rare that poor historian swords have fullers. Um, just one, but good to see it then to not. The other thing is that the blade does not have any marks, any made in India stamping or anything like that on it. Uh, one thing I did not like, you can kind of see this little bit right here. When I opened it up, I, I think it might have had tape on it or something, but I have not been, you can see how the coloration changes here. I have not been able to fix that no matter how many times I clean and buff it. It still just has that line there. Minor note, because I'm more worried about construction and educational ability rather than looks itself. Um, nonetheless, it's still good. I would assume that this is also pleather. Um, underneath it, I would assume it's also wood. Difficult to tell without me tearing it apart, and I don't want to. I like this sword. Um, nonetheless, I think this is probably going to be... Let me crouch down again. I lost my tripod. Uh, this is probably going to be probably the highest ranked poor historian sword that I have yet to uh, review. 
Very good find. It's still uh, $35, $36 on Amazon if you want to take a look there. Uh, free shipping. You don't need Prime. Cool stuff. Uh, I think Suzco sells a, a version of that too. Nonetheless, you have to dig for the $35 one, $36 one, but awesome find. I'm very glad to find this. This is the kind of stuff that I look for when I look for cheap swords, and I haven't really been able to find one yet. So, uh, Other than that, check out the grades, subscribe. Apparently a lot of people encourage viewers to subscribe. Uh, and uh, keep around, keep on, keep on watching. Take care, guys.